With your CIG TV News Update, I'm Donna Bush. Thanks for joining us. As we reported on Wednesday, the third annual One Health Symposium took place at the Health Services Authority, attracting various uh, health industry professionals. One topic of discussion was childhood obesity, what it is, complications that come with the disease, and how prevalent childhood obesity is in the Cayman Islands. The complications of childhood obesity, there are just so many, and I'm going to talk touch base on quite a few of these today. So, you know, there's neurological um, issues, there's lots of cardiovascular ones, which we'll talk about, the endocrine, which I'll focus on a little bit more. Um, you have musculoskeletal, gastrointestinal, pulmonary, psychosocial is also a very big one, and that's one thing we'll talk about because you do see this um, happening more and more in kids acting out in school because um, sometimes they're just teased. So with cardiovascular complications, just to start off with, you definitely see more of this in the overweight and in obese kids. And when you look at any of these kids that are above that 95th percentile, which we talked about just now, there's a threefold risk of hypertension in these, these children. And what's interesting is quite often they have masked hypertension. And what masked hypertension means is that when they come into your office, you do a blood pressure on them, and the blood pressure most of the time looks okay. What happens is if you actually put an ambulatory blood pressure monitor in them, 50% of these kids have hypertension. So that's a lot of children with hypertension and they're running around and you're not even aware of it. So that's actually really important. So it's something that maybe we should start to do ambulatory blood pressures on these children when we see them because we're really missing a lot of this. Um, you can see a lot of dyslipidemia in these kids too. And again, it occurs amongst overweight and obese kids, especially the ones that have central fat distribution. The typical um, lipid profile you get, you see a very high LDL, a high triglyceride, and a low HDL. And um, so why I'm bringing this up, and this is kind of touching base on this, is when we look at the English Caribbean, and this was from a PAHO study, you can see here in the English Caribbean, what we are dying from are cardiovascular and cardiovascular diseases and diabetes. The rest of these diseases are not quite as pre prevalent here, and so this is one of the reasons we really do need to focus on, ch on children when we see this. This is something we need to prevent. Um, growth in puberty is interesting as well. Now, what happens with these kids is when, they have the, when they're either overweight or obese, they actually grow quickly. So often you see these kids and they're very tall, and they tend to be very tall in their class. But what happens is they grow tall and they tend to fuse, um, to start puberty early and fuse early. So they actually get to their height that they were going to always reach. They're not necessarily taller than everyone else. They just look taller when they're younger because they reach that height quicker. Um, and they tend to go into puberty much younger as well. And again, that's something you have to, to watch for. And you can watch Dr. Hislop Chestnut's entire talk on childhood obesity here on CIG TV next Monday evening following For the Record at 8 p.m. In other health-related news, the theme for World Health Day 2019 is universal health coverage with a focus on access to primary health care. World Health Day is this coming Sunday, the 7th of April. To help facilitate continued access to primary health care, the local public health department will offer free health screenings at the East End United Church Hall from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. this coming Saturday, April the 6th. Now, this, the initiative is part of continued work by the public health department to emphasize the benefits of healthy lifestyles and the importance of early detection in enabling appropriate treatment. Now, preventing complications and ensuring quality of life in diabetes and hypertension patients as well. For further information, you can call the Public Health Department on 244-2632 to find out more about this weekend's health screenings. And in his message to mark World Health Day this coming Sunday, an excerpt from Minister for Health, the Honorable Dwayne Seymour says, World Health Day is a time for decision makers, educators, advocates, and indeed the whole community to consider how we can improve health outcomes around the world and in our local communities. He continued by saying, we look forward to continuing our partnerships with the local health sector, healthcare advocates, and community groups as we work together to secure the best possible healthcare outcomes for the people of the Cayman Islands. And that ends today's news update here on CIG Television. If you missed it, you can go to the Cayman Islands Government Facebook page or the CIG Television YouTube channel. I'm Donna Bush, as always, thanking you for joining me, wishing you a wonderful and, of course, a very safe night, and inviting you back here again on Friday evening. Until then, bye-bye for now.
Did you know planning permission is required to clear land by mechanical means? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Boating, fishing and water sports in the Cayman Islands are great, but keep a cool head. Here are seven tips for fun and safe sea outings. Number one, use a checklist to plan your outing. Check the weather forecast, make a float plan and share it with someone who is remaining on land, stating where you're going, with whom and when you're expected to return. Visit your nearest marine supply store to get your safety gear. This includes signaling mirrors, whistles, and a flare kit. It's also very important to have onboard flotation devices and life vests for each person. There are different types of vests. Some are for water sport activities, such as snorkeling, and others are for going on offshore boating or on fishing trips. Number two, these items can be lifesavers in case of an accident or bad weather. Number three, use a motor kill switch, especially if you're boating alone. In case of a leak or breakdown, always stay with the boat until help arrives. If you capsize, an emergency beacon or locator device can send a distress signal to inform the authorities of your location. Larger flares will indicate distress to a boat, airplane, or search and rescue officials. Number four, in addition to sunscreen, food, and beverages, it would be smart to have a cell phone. Make sure your marine radio works. Cayman boaters use channel 16 to communicate. Number five, also don't forget your anchor and sufficient rope. Number six, boat operators should be familiar with the local waters and reefs, as well as the capabilities and functions of the vessels they are using. Always obey the rules of the sea and the marine environment and have courtesy for others. Number seven, alcohol and salt water do not mix, especially if you're the captain. Some useful contact numbers are 911. The RCIPS Marine Base is 649-7710 and the Port Authority is 949-2055. Smooth sailing all. Did you know that planning permission is required for an addition, alteration, or any material change to your house? The 10% rule no longer exists. Did you know you should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required? The Esterly Tibbetts Highway three-lane roundabout is ready for drivers. It's time to make sure you know how to use it. First, know which exit you need to take. Pay attention to lane arrows and signs. Make sure you use your signal to change lanes or exit the roundabout. To turn left, you always approach in the left-hand lane and indicate left. To drive straight ahead, you need to be looking out for signs and road markings indicating which lane to use. Get in one of the lanes marked with a straight through arrow. If turning right, you must use the right-hand lane and indicate accordingly. To use the roundabout safely, remember these three tips. Know your exit, pick your lane, and signal to make your turn. Did you know your mailing address details on your land register must be up to date in order to receive notices on new development which may impact you? Visit Lands and Survey Department to check your mailing address is correct. Did you know that walls, fences located along the road require planning permission no matter the height? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required. Did you know that fences and walls within the high water setback require planning permission no matter the height? You should check with the department as a planning and permit application may be required.